I'm Video Bob, and today we're going to talk about my 1981 Checker A11 New York City taxi cab. That's right, this is a real New York City A11 Checker taxi cab. It's not the Marathon A12, which you generally see. I've owned a few of these Checkers over the years. This one was owned by a guy named Joe Pollard, very important person in the checker community. This guy owned tons of these cars. He really kept this hobby alive. I have extensive records on this car that blows me away. This car was in a lot of movies and television shows. I guarantee you've probably seen this thing on a TV show or movie uh, that featured these. Now, I'm not gonna go into the entire history of the checker cab company, but these cars were purposefully built by checker motors. It's not a Chevy. I know people think it's like a 58 Chevy. It isn't. They were made in 1958 all the way till 1982 in Kalamazoo, Michigan at the Checker Motors Company. They were purposefully built to be taxi and service vehicles. Uh, it has like a truck ladder frame, body sits on top of that. You have a big flat floor all the way across so that when you get in this thing, there's tons of room. You could fit a bunch of people back here. You can sit, sit like five, six people back here, plus somebody up front. Tons of storage in the trunk area. The thing is made to be a truck. And the way this thing has survived over the years is just quite frankly amazing. Fortunately, it breaks my heart to say that this car is going away. I've sold this car. They're coming to pick it up. And I realized I'd had this in my collection, and I'd never done a proper video on it. So I thought I would go ahead and take you on a quick tour of it before it goes away. And it really, it's kind of a tease because this is a pretty hard hobby to get into to collect this car. There's probably only a few hundred of these left. And the chances of you finding a real New York City A11 taxi cab that isn't rusted out and totally trashed in its original paint with the fare meter, forget it. You're not going to find this car. And it breaks my heart to sell it. This thing has working air conditioning and it runs. It's running now. These cars generally go about a million miles and then they crush them and then you never see them again. Typically, when you find one of these cars, you're gonna find what's called the A12 Marathon. At the end of the company's run, they were trying to stay in business. You see, these taxi drivers were dealing with high gas prices and these things were boats. They didn't get great gas mileage. They weren't that comfortable. They didn't have a lot of luxuries in them. And uh, they were going over to other cars. They were trying out Japanese cars or the Chevy Capris or all these other different options, right? And these guys were going out of business. So they tried everything to stay in business. They started selling passenger cars. So what they would do is they'd put a vinyl top on here, put an opera window here, try to make it kind of luxurious and nice and try to sell it on the idea that, hey, you're buying a tank of a car that'll never break down. But people didn't want to buy a car from a company they knew was going out of business. So you saw a few of these A12s running around, that's the one that I had before that I had converted into a taxi. Usually you have to cut this out, put this window in, uh, paint it yellow, add the stickers, all those kind of things. But this is the real deal. And the fact that it's in the condition that it's in is just quite frankly amazing. So yeah, this thing is a big car. It's a big car. I mean, this thing's big like my Rolls Royce. It's a big car. And um, it's made completely of steel. It's got some unique features that were purposefully built um, to make it tough. Now, a lot of people, like I said, they usually think it's a, you know, a late 50s Chevy because of the dual headlights and the way it's designed. It does have a lot of Chevy parts. Now, this particular car has what I believe is a Buick V6. They use that in a lot of these because they're just rock solid, man. They just run forever. The thing is running right now. I don't know if you can hear it over my microphone, but the thing purrs like a kitten doesn't overheat, it's running great. Um, but every part of this thing is designed that you could easily take it apart and change it. Check out what we call the guardrail bumpers. Now these aren't the pretty chrome bumpers that were originally on it back in the 60s and some of the 70s. But to, to meet you know, the bumper requirements, the five mile an hour bumper, you can, I mean, these things are thick. I mean, these cars would regularly just tap each other, you know, instead of honking or whatever, they just bump each other out of the way like bumper cars, just give, give a little love tap. Yeah, try that today. See if you don't get shut. Let's talk about these rear quarters back here. These were designed that you could take them off and remove them. How cool is that? You could take off this seam here. You could take off this, this covering here. And you could remove this entire rear quarter panel for easy replacement in case you had a fender bender. Now, if you got hit back here, 
this wasn't so easy to fix. But this section, if you got a, you know, not too bad of a wreck, you could replace this. Now, my keen eyed checker followers will notice that these aren't the correct fenders for this car. These actually went to the wagon series, crazy enough. For some reason, these ended up on the car, which makes it very unique. But uh, still looks very cool. Most people would never notice. It's just a very slight detail that only my extreme checker fans would notice. There's a few of you out there. I'm sure that you've already typed it in the comments before you even got to this part of the video. Calm down. I know. It looks fine. Now, if you live in New York or you visited New York, this thing, the silhouette of this car is literally the symbol of New York City. You walk into the airport, you walk down through Times Square, you need a symbol for New York, you've got the Statue of Liberty and you've got this checker cab. I mean, this thing is and has been and always will be really the, the, the symbol of New York City. Even though it was just as popular in Chicago and LA and all over the country, used as a service taxi cab, yellow cab company, checker cab company, and whatever fill in the blank cab company. But there's something about New York City, the Big Apple, the Empire State Building, and, and all of these different iconic images, but the checker, every time I visit New York City, I'm so tempted to buy all the checker, you know, little knickknacks that they're selling all over the place. And it's because if you ever visited New York City, you saw one of these cars. Look at the silhouette of this thing. It's so iconic. Now the car was designed to be entered from the right side, the passenger side, the curb side. Weren't supposed to really open that door over there. Sometimes they would be locked where you couldn't even open them. The design was you would enter from the curb. You'll notice these little jump seats are cheated towards this direction because if you had a full, uh, you know, full seat back there, you could fit a couple of your friends they could get in right here. Yeah. Imagine trying to sit in this thing facing that way. But if you were by yourself, those folded up. Look how much, I mean, my, I'm 6'2". Lots of room in here. Now, the average uh, A11 checker would not have this beautiful headliner. This headliner was added in here. It would have had a cardboard headliner and rubber floors. Usually with a hole in the bottom you could open so they could hose it out because people puked in these things or had a baby in it or whatever. I get to you there's a lot of people alive today that were born in the back seat of one of these and maybe a few of you that might have been conceived in the back of one. But you have enough room to, to completely, I mean, there's not too many other cars that have this much space. And the car was purposely built to have this flat floor. So that imagine you've got, you know, a couple of big dudes, chicks, whatever, fat so's, we can sit in here and then I can pull this seat like this and yet another person can sit here. I'm not even crouching into their foot room when they get in. So five people easily fit in the back of this thing. That way you can share the fare. You got a whole group of people. So you actually, if somebody was sitting up front, that's six. And then you could potentially get seven in here if they were willing to sit next to the driver. You could put two people there. You could maybe fit four back here. I mean, if you had people that weren't too big, you know, you could probably technically fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people crammed in this thing. I mean, it's possible. Not today but maybe 40, 50 years ago. I wanna to try to demonstrate this seat, how ridiculous this is. You would literally be like this. Hello. Take me uptown. How uncomfortable would this be? Front seat. Completely different thing. Got lots of room. Now you can, you know, move this thing around. You can slide it forward back uh, to give them extra room. It's a bench. Imagine this vinyl has survived all these years just fine. Fair meter still works. This air conditioner here actually still blows ice cold. Unbelievable. 
This was a rare, rare option. Didn't see a lot of New York City cabs that were air conditioned back in that time. They generally drove around with the windows open or up. It was probably cold and rainy more than it wasn't. Crazy enough, the washer still works on this thing. I don't want to operate it because we just cleaned the window. We just detailed the car. But it's been sitting here idling the entire time we've been doing the video and it's running cool as a cucumber. What a fantastic car. This thing fires right up every time. It rides like a tank, rattles, you know. But, I mean, it's, it's a great experience. It's fantastic. Hey, how you doing? Where we going? Hey, I'm driving here. They never say that. Let's go for a little ride around the block. Hope this works out okay. I just kind of put my tripod there in the floorboard. There's that much room you can do that. Dispatch, I've got one rider. So here it is, your point of view. Riding as a passenger in the back of a real checker taxi. What do you think? Yeah, one of the things I learned about having one of these cars, you go riding around downtown or something, you gotta keep the doors locked. People will just jump in the car. Like, take me to the airport. By the way, don't ever drive one of these to the airport. Because if you take what they think is a taxi or a limousine into the airport, and you don't have a proper license number with you, you'll get in big trouble. I can't tell you how many times I've had to try to explain to people, this is not a real taxi. It's just my, a car. They go, but it's a taxi on top. I know, but it's just, you know, for fun. I can only imagine what it's like to have been a real New York City cabbie. I bet there's some great stories, and I bet there's going to be some great comments down below. Share this with somebody that you know that's a taxi driver. See what they think. It's like when you drive around a, you know, a police car, an ambulance, which I've done. I got a police car at the house. I've had ambulances. I love professional vehicles. There's, it's, there's something really cool about it. And unfortunately, you know, most of the, um, the apps out there like Uber, Lyft, Turo, they don't allow cars this old. But I guarantee you that if I started doing like Uber and Lyft in this thing, people would be thrilled. They would think it's cool as hell. Tell me in the comments, if your Uber or Lyft showed up and it was one of these, how would you think that's cool or would you be annoyed? I gotta tell you, this thing is not fast. It's pretty slow, but it's designed to really only drive around city streets. You'd probably rarely ever see one of these on the highway. Maybe if they had a long range pickup and they were going to LaGuardia or JFK, maybe, you know. I don't know if they could cross state lines into Newark, possibly. Not sure how all that works. But um, you would generally see these things going five, 10 miles an hour in traffic, honking the horn, going up and down Fifth Avenue. There's a lot of people who've never got the chance to ride in one of these cars because they were out of commission, you know, 20 years ago was probably the last one that was on the road, somewhere in there, I don't know. There's also people who've told me passionate stories that they as immigrants were, were so thrilled uh, to see one of these for real in the first time they came to America. I remember there was this old Asian lady came up to me in tears and she said, Wow, I thought I'd never see one of these again. She said, when I came with my family to America, one of the first things I ever saw was one of these giant yellow cars. I'd never seen a car this big. And I remember it so vividly being in New York City and seeing them everywhere. And she just told me so passionately how important it was to her to, to see this car again. It really brings out a lot of emotion for people, Italian immigrants and Asians. Yeah, you know, Russians, Armenians, uh, whatever, wherever you came from, if you went to Ellis Island, could be one of the first rides you took on this continent was in one of these yellow vehicles. 
And that's a special thing, and that's what makes it so, not only New York, but American. There's nothing more American than a checker cab. It embodies everything. It's made 100% in the United States. I don't think there's a foreign part on this car. And not only that, but I mean, it's just made in America, stamped out of steel, ran forever, gave people the opportunity to be entrepreneurs and work for themselves as their own uh, drivers. Just so much um, that's associated with this wonderful car. It just means so much to me. It's breaking my heart so much that they're coming to take it away. But, you know, I, I, times are getting tough. I got to sell the car. You know, um, I, I, the thing's just sitting outside baking in the sun. And I don't have the ability to take care of it. I have too many cars. I have about 25 cars as it is right now. People that watch my channel know that, you know, we do the DeLorean time machines from Back to the Future and Ghostbusters Night Rider. I mean, just sitting here in the parking lot, I got my Dodge truck. I got... Eric Carr's Porsche, I got this Ferrari Testarossa replica, I got a DeLorean, I got an XLR, there's a Lexus, there's the Blues Brothers car over there, I've got a time machine in there, Lamborghini Countach replica, two Rolls Royces, you know, there's a police car over there, like, I, I'm not bragging, I'm just saying, it's like I have car collector people problems. These cars also needed to make a lot of U-turns. Check out the turning radius. Woof. Squealing a little. But look at this. You just do circles. It squawks a little. That's all right. I just love this thing. All right, your ride's over. That'll be $3.64 plus gratuity. Oof. All right, guys. That was a little tour of my Checker A11 taxi. You know, if you're interested in learning more about these cars, you could check out the Checker Club of America. They'd love to have you. And if you want to find one of these, you're either going to be in for a big restoration project or you're going to have to put a lot of money in it. It's one of those weird things, you know, it's like the guys that are in the checker clubs, like they get annoyed with people taking these marathons and turning them into taxis. You know, they, they roll their eyes at that. Sort of like the guys give me guff about turning the DeLoreans into time machines or taking a charger and make it into a General Lee, you know. But that's what these cars were. They were never meant to be passenger vehicles, the A12s out there. They were supposed to be these purpose-built taxis. They used them for police cars. They also used them as uh, other things as well. They had what they called the Aerobus, where they had as many as eight doors on them, and they could carry passengers to and from the airport. This is before they had shuttle buses. They also had one called the Medicar that had a super high roof and a large door that you could put a wheelchair in, but they were always purposefully built for being people movers in a professional uh, standpoint, not to be passenger vehicles that you take home. They were never designed to do that. And they're not really that practical. I mean, I guess they are. I mean, you could use this totally as a daily driver. I could daily drive this car, no problem. But by today's standards, even with the air conditioning it has, I don't know, it's just, it's not the kind of car you wanna have. Yeah, I've had a lot of classic cars. I've had 57 Chevys and I've had all these different cars and, you know, there's a certain amount of nostalgia to them, but that's one of the reasons I'm selling this car as much as I love it and as cool as it is. Take it to cars and coffee once in a while, maybe take it out once in a while, but I've really only taken this car out maybe three or four or five times in the last, you know, however long I've had it. It's just not a car that you're going to drive, especially here in Las Vegas. It's either brutally hot or it's really cold. Right now we're in the end of September where it's beautiful outside, which is perfect for doing this video. I love this car so much. And it was because of the checker that I met one of my dearest friends, my buddy Jack, on our television show Screen Machines, if you saw that. I met him through the checker club because he was a checker fan. He showed up at my shop just because he wanted to, he'd never even seen a real one in person that he could ride in. And I had one that was running and driving and I sold that one to the people at New York Seltzer and they had it as a promotional vehicle and 
I regretted it ever since. And I'd been looking for another one. And I know I'm going to regret selling this thing. Oh, it's killing me. But I wanted to make this video out there for the other people out there that either don't know anything about this car or are just now learning about it. Um, this is the Checker Taxi. Um, I'm going to wait for the sun to go down. And as we're exiting the video, you can see some beauty shots with the lights on. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content and you want to know more about the other cars I mentioned, make sure to subscribe. Turn on your notifications because sometimes we do live videos and you'll be notified for when we're doing a live Q&A on my, the Video Bob show and the other things we're doing. So, hey, thanks for going for a ride with me and my checker. I'm Video Bob. <laughs>